absolute fire, but it's his 20th season. Father time, he can't be far behind. No, you're exactly you right. You know he's right. I'm undefeated. We'll see about that. LeBron versus Father Time. Talking to himself. It's getting weird. You're not gonna beat me. You're not gonna beat me. Shit, get down. LeBron wins. Ah! Help me out. Let me help you up, my boy. Sit down, old man. Oh, what? You ain't scared, huh? You scared? This is what I do. You see the way my feet turned out? I'm crazy. I'm not going hard enough. Shalom, Yashirala, it's the brother Ash Ibad. Coming back in the spirit. And want to give all praises to Yahweh by Shim Yahweh Anyways, man, today's video, I want to get into this Nike commercial in regards to LeBron James versus Father Time. For those of y'all who watch the NBA, you know, I had first seen this video on opening day when the Lakers were playing the Clippers. And this commercial was constantly airing in regards to LeBron trying to beat the clock, trying to beat quote unquote Father Time, right? And you had the announcers like Reggie Miller and the other dude who you know, commentates on the game. He was talking about, man, look at LeBron. Look at how he dunks that, man. Can you believe he's in year 20? And this is something that a lot of people in the mainstream media, in the sports media, where they're constantly talking about how LeBron is defying the odds. And when you look at it at face value, you know, that is true for LeBron to be in year 20 and to be doing what he's doing. It is a testament to his greatness. Now, for those of y'all brothers who understand you know many things behind the scenes lebron has certain things stacked in his favor let's just keep it at that but when you look at this commercial it's a lot deeper you know when you brothers start to get some understanding about the mystery school system the babylonian comedic mystery school system you do a lot of research on the pagan gods whether it be greek whether it be ancient greece whether it be ancient rome ancient Kemet, ancient egypt ancient babylon you start to realize and understand that a lot of these quote-unquote pagan gods they go a lot deeper into how this society is galvanized because at the end of the day we are in modern day egypt modern day rome etc etc so these are the gods of this society and if you brothers can't see through the lines a lot of times you might get deceived in regards to a lot of these celebrities these athletes these rappers and what they truly venerate so i want to get into this video real quick so first things first you see on the right you have quote unquote father time but when you actually do some studying, that represents Saturn. You know, he's obviously in the purple. You see behind him, he has the clock. And the god Saturn is the god of time, right? So this is a picture of what, you know, people proclaim to be Saturn. So obviously, he's holding, um, I forgot what that's called. But basically, y'all brothers know, it's like the, oh, the hourglass, right? So basically, when you flip the hourglass, whenever the sand comes through the cracks, that means that your time is up. And then you obviously see him with a scythe, similar to the Grim Reaper, because he is the god of souls or the god of the dead, right? So essentially, when you look at that amalgamation of father time, father time is really just showing you the Greek god of Saturn, right? Also, when you read into some of Saturn's characteristics, it says Saturn was a god in ancient Roman religion and a character in Roman mythology. He was described as a god of time, generation, abundance, wealth, agriculture, periodic renewal, and liberation. Saturn's mythological reign was depicted as a golden age of abundance and peace. I want to actually get into the commercial because when you brothers look at the commercial, there's a lot of him hidden symbolism because LeBron is in a quote unquote battle against Saturn time uh, against uh, Saturn against Father Time. But when you really look at the commercial, LeBron is in a battle against Michael Jordan, aka the GOAT, aka Saturn. Let's watch it real quick. Say about that. 
So I wanted to stop right there because y'all can see the quote unquote God Saturn is going against LeBron, right? And again, he has the purple, right? And they're on the court playing one on one. Now, when you really look and you understand LeBron's career arc, he's always been in a constant battle against Michael Jordan. Didn't LeBron a few years back saying he's chasing that ghost from Chicago? And it says, can LeBron beat Father Time? Father Time is catching up to LeBron. In actuality, it's the reverse. LeBron is trying to catch up with quote unquote Father Time, Father Time or Saturn, AKA the GOAT. But he obviously understands that his time is running out. Now, this was the first commercial. But when you go into the 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 following sequences you can definitely tell who is who is talking about watch all right now i want you to really look at this round now, first and foremost round 23 now you obviously know lebron wears 23 you obviously know uh, michael jordan wears 23 you know kobe wears number 24 um who else magic johnson wears the number 32 three times two is six larry bird 33 so you obviously understand that the vast majority of the all-time greats in the nba their number is centered around 23 or six for saturn now i want y'all to really watch this commercial real quick Now, real quick, so LeBron is going against Father Time, right? But to the outside world, LeBron is talking to himself. That's why you had his son, Bronny, and I, I forgot his name, uh, Bryce or whatever his name is, saying, why is your dad always talking to himself? Because again, LeBron is in a figurative or a spiritual battle against Saturn, aka Michael Jordan. Again, when you look at the quote where LeBron said he's chasing the ghost of Michael Jordan, He's essentially telling you he's trying to chase in his legacy. He's trying to chase in his spirit to be like Mike, but essentially like Mike or Le or Michael Jordan is undefeated. He's the he's the GOAT, right? So let's get into it more. Let's let's watch more of the video, right? So you can obviously see, you know, what Nike's showing you. It looks harmless. It looks, oh, look, LeBron's just something funny. But again, all these commercials, whether it be the NBA Finals, the Super Bowl, especially in the Super Bowl, when y'all brothers look and y'all see a lot of the things, they're essentially preparing the masses to venerate these guys openly. Because, you know, 20, 30 years ago, the world was heavily involved in what? Christianity, you know, uh, the Catholic Church, Islam, which, you know, the vast majority of people in the world are in as well but now we're in a time where all the religions are trying to expose themselves as what they really are and that's just the veneration of the father god the mother goddess and the divine child the divine hermaphrodite so essentially what a lot of these companies like nike disney you know amazon but mainly the, the media companies are trying to do is they're trying to get you to be familiar with a lot of the greek and roman gods and the person you know a few brothers have actually put me on game you know Quan 144 chronicles of judah many of y'all brothers you know we share a lot of knowledge and information about the occult and about these you know false pagan gods because you got to be able to understand you know a lot of brothers they get fooled with Kyrie and kanye and any celebrity that sits here and, and professes themselves to be an israelite but behind the scenes they worship these gods just like allegedly of course allegedly allegedly just like with that video i did in regards to um dc young fly how he had the red black and white for pan you know essentially they show these hidden symbols for those brothers and sisters who understand the knowledge and who understand what the occult is really about their true affinity for you know these these false guys right now i also want to get this one picture let's look into the aspects of michael jordan being the quote-unquote goat right so of course you got saturn right he's undefeated 
Now, when you look at Michael Jordan, you know, you they always relay him as the GOAT, right? They always relay him, you know, he's in the Bull, the Bulls jersey, black, white, and red for Pan. Because Michael Jordan essentially is the GOAT guy. You see what I'm saying? He is the GOAT of the NBA. That's what people call him and refer to him. Now, you have people like Kareem, you know, people who speak about LeBron, you know, Wilt. But essentially, the, the career that Michael Jordan had, when you put all the advanced metrics, when you put the championships when you put his statistics and you put the aura that was around him compared to these other quote-unquote basketball gods michael jordan is undefeated kind of like zeus when you brothers look up the greek mythology zeus was the ruler of mount olympus he was the rulers and he was the head of all the other gods that try to you know uh take their claim on mount olympus right I uh, see. Look, Jordan. He's what? He's six and zero. Not only that, but Jordan is six foot six, right? <laughs> he wears the number twenty three. He has two three peats. Again, going uh, adding up to what? Six and zero. Six Finals MVPs. So everything related to Jordan is always around the number six. You see what I'm saying? You also get into this is a quote in regards to LeBron. This is Paul Pierce. He's saying, I think in the back of his mind, he wants to be better than Michael Jordan. As far as stats, championships, honors, he doesn't have anything to prove. Right now, LeBron is chasing the GOAT. So one of the main media narratives that the NBA has is LeBron is in constant competition with Michael Jordan, which is obviously why LeBron is trying to accumulate as many stats as possible. So that way people can look at his legacy and try to compare him with Jordan because they obviously know he's not going to have the same mystique. He's not going to have the same global influence. He's not going to have the same personality and aura as Jordan. So LeBron's trying to basically, um, you know, cultivate his own niche. And as y'all brothers can see, this is basically a, round, a Mount Rushmore picture. You got, I think that's uh, Bill Russell or Will Chamberlain on the left right there. Then you got Magic Johnson. You got Larry Bird. You got Michael Jordan in the middle. You got Kobe Bryant. You got LeBron James. And you got Kareem on the right. So essentially, when you look at this picture, these are the gods of the NBA, right? The Mount Rushmore of the NBA. Because all of these athletes you know obviously a lot of your brothers understand about the mk ultra program you know a lot of us brothers we believe that many of these athletes are mk ultra program of course we don't have full-fledged proof but when you look at the numbers and you look at the symbology and you look at the roles that they played in the nba it is very obvious you see what i'm saying but essentially all these athletes have you know allowed their acclaim and they're allowing their their legacy to live on forever even after they pass even with kobe you know bill russell just passed away but they're trying to build a legacy in the in the in the um alls of the nba so that people can idolize them and that's when you look and that's why when you look back at the roman society when you look back at the greek society one of the main things that galvanized their society was sports you know the gladiator in these great big arenas again ecclesiastes chapter 3 there is nothing new under the sun so the same things that happened 2000 years ago are going on right now and one of the main aspects of understanding the occult is no the occult is not going to give you salvation the occult is not going to allow you to build your relationship with the most high the most high is not going to judge you based off of your understanding on these things but what these things do do is help you understand the reality and understand what you're looking at and understand essentially what this society and what the powers that be want the people of the earth to follow and to venerate that way you brothers can understand what the most high tells you not to do and tells you not to worship and you don't get caught up in these storylines you don't get caught up in these characters and you don't get caught up in idolizing somebody and placing them as a god because the vast majority of people on earth they look at these men and they worship them as gods that's why people are so galvanized with sports especially in america now this is a picture of lebron because just in my opinion lebron represents hercules he represents kratos a god of strength that's why lebron is so obsessed with this body this is a picture of him you know doing those that liquid nitrogen therapy i don't know if your brothers are familiar like six seven years ago it came out that lebron what he did as a as a form of recovery is that he would you know uh freeze his body in liquid nitrogen 
and that's something that most people have never done i think there's an article going out how lebron spends over a million dollars on you know recovery of his body which is one of the reasons why lebron has been able to last for 20 years now you know just me personally i know the brother judah he stated this as well and other brothers stated this but lebron is genetically modified again we don't have no proof but when you look up the biogenesis ledger in 2012 2013 in the, i think it was in the miami herald lebron's name was on that list and it's just very obvious the way that lebron's body is shaped and that some of the things that he's able to do all the way up to year 20 is very clear and it's very evident that he has some form of genetically something that genetically modified him and he's on some shit bro he is on something but again when you look up the the greek god hercules and kratos they're the god of strength and essentially just in my opinion they represent a mortal half mortal half god trying to beat the odds trying to break through their body and do something that no mere mortal has been able to do just in my opinion that's what lebron represents now also i wanted to get this picture because i'm not sure if y'all brothers are familiar with an instagram page where there was a guy he would uh make little cartoon art in regards to like nba storylines and this is back in 2020 this is when, you know, LeBron and Giannis were in the race for MVP. I'm sure y'all brothers remember that. That was one of the main storylines. So essentially, you got Giannis and LeBron in a race for what? For the uh, MVP trophy. And you know, you know, Giannis, he won in 2020. But then you see when Giannis grabs the trophy, LeBron's still running. And when you look at the bottom right here, LeBron is chasing what? The GOAT. You see? He's chasing, he's chasing the goat. He's chasing Michael Jordan. And you see in the background, there's kind of like a little stone mountain and you see different faces on there. So LeBron, what he's doing is he's trying to chase his place on Mount Olympus, on Mount Rushmore. He's trying to be with one of the, the ancient mythological gods and which in modern day is represented with a lot of these NBA athletes. So whenever you see LeBron in a competition with Saturn, whenever you see LeBron in a competition with Father Time, essentially LeBron is trying to, you know, um, certify his place as a modern amalgamation of an ancient Greek god, but just in the NBA. You see what I'm saying? So, Lord willing, this lesson was edifying. Hopefully, our brothers got some understanding. If I said something incorrect in regards to, you know, one of these, you know, uh, pagan gods, and y'all brothers want to add anything in the comment section, feel free. And, you know, brothers understand what you're looking at. You know, there's nothing wrong with watching sports for entertainment. But don't get caught up in the storyline and don't get caught up in the characters, man. Because at the end of the day, they know which, they know which gods that they're worshiping. And with that being said, it's the brother Ash Ibot signing out.